Okay, so today Zach Himes is going to tell us about um, some calculations with the atom spectral sequence. So go for it, Zach. Um, cool. Uh, great. Um, it's great to be um, you know talking to you all today. So um, today I want to tell you about how to like compute um, some stable homotopy groups of spheres using um, the May spectral sequence. Um, and just I'm going to focus on um, the the two component of um, these homotopy groups. So throughout this you know talk, I'm just going to assume that. Um, P is two, but you know, there's obviously a similar story for when P is an odd prime. Um, and yeah, so, so we want to do is we want to calculate, you know, um, when we, we want to do is we want to calculate, you know, these stable homotopy groups. And, you know, one way of doing that is to calculate like X of, you know, F2 um, and F2 over, you know, the dual of the Steenron algebra. And, you know, one way we can sort of do this is to just sort of, um, you know, take the Cobar complex associated um, to um, the homology of the sphere uh, spectrum over, um, you know, the, the dual of the sphere on algebra, but, you know, so that we can certainly do this one way. Um, but, you know, like a drawback to this is obviously that um, this Cobar complex is just like too big and the algebra is too complicated to really sort of um, work with in practice. Um, and so May's idea was basically to construct another spectral sequence um, coming from like a canonical filtration on um, on the steam on the steam on algebra. In particular, it's like a filtration that exists for any like hop community of hop algebra, basically. And the point of this filtration is that um, once we construct this, there's once we construct this special sequence, um, this will converge to um, these stable homotopy groups that we care about. Um, and yeah, um, so basically what I want to sort of do, um, oh yeah, before I continue further, I should mention that like everything I'm going to say um, today can be found in um, Ravenel's book, um, you know, chapter three, section two, um, as well as um, the first appendix um, at the end of the book. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, as I was saying, we want to like introduce some sort of filtration on the dual of the Steiner algebra. And so um, let me sort of say a little bit about how you do that. So um, right now I'm just gonna assume that um, gamma is a commutative help hop algebra over um, some like ring A. And obviously, you know, the example to keep in mind here is um, the case that uh, A is the field F2 and gamma is the dual of the Steiner algebra. Um, if I, you know, this isn't the, most like I could make a more general assumption on what gamma and A are. I guess like technically I could assume that it's like uh, a hop or uh, a hop algebra algebraid, I guess, but I didn't really want to get into that. Um, but my point is so you can work in a little bit more general setting, but um, you know, this will do for now. Um, but anyway, since gamma is a community of hop algebra, we have um, a unimap from A into gamma and associated with that, we have um, something called the co-ideal, which is just the co-kernel uh, of this union map. Um, and now from um, the co-product, um, which I'll denote by delta, of gamma into um, gamma tensor with itself, um, we have um, a map, uh, which I'll denote gamma um, u uh, from uh, gamma into the u plus one tensor product of uh, gamma. And so um, as a result, we can sort of introduce this filtration, um, which I called um, F sub U of gamma, uh, which is just the kernel of uh, gamma into um, gamma tensored with itself U plus one times. And then we um, map into uh, gamma bar. And gamma bar here is just, you know, this co-kernel um, into the co-ideal. And um, anyway, so from this, um, F sub u of gamma, we, we get a filtration on gamma. And that just means that we can sort of, you know, filter the hop algebra um, bit by bit. Um, and, and there's some other, you know, conditions of what it exactly, uh, you know, filtration on a, on a hop algebra is, but, you know, I don't really think, it's not really necessary to sort of get the idea of what's happening here. Um, and similarly, we have like a, a filtration on, uh, you know, A, which is just, you know, the unit, the image of the unit map. Um, intersected with um, the youth stage of the filtration um, on gamma. And so as a result, because of this filtration, we have, um, we can take the associated graded, um, 
which is just, you know, going to be, um, which in degree u is just f of u um, gamma modulo um, f of u minus one gamma. And, um, you know, something I should say is that like, you know, so um, from this procedure, we can get another half algebra, namely we can get, um, by taking this associated grade, we get a new um, half algebra. And that's basically what the following um, prop, uh, proposition here says. Um, and yeah, and so um, what's good about this is that, so we have a, a new half algebra um, E naught of A with E naught, or we have a new half algebra of E gamma of A over, uh, sorry, E naught of gamma over E naught of A. And um, as a result, um, we have um, the following spectral sequence construction, uh, which basically says that um, if uh, A, uh, if the pair A gamma is a filtered half algebra, and M and N are um, left and right co-modules respectively over this half algebra. And in addition, we have a filtration on um, these co-modules and on gamma that are, are compatible. Um, then there is a natural um, spectral sequence um, whose E1 page calculates uh, X of E naught of M, uh, and E naught of N over um, E naught of gamma. And it's gonna to converge to um, X of um, our original co-modules over gamma and, and yeah. And so, um, you know, basically the idea behind like how you would, this spectral sequence is constructed is that, um, you know, so we have, um, because we have filtrations on gamma M and N, um, this gives rise to a natural filtration on um, the cobar um, construct on the cobar resolution of um, m n n over gamma, and so we and in particular we have that e naught of the cobar resolution is going to be equal to the cobar resolution over the associated graded, and so from that from the like you know from a cobar resolution we have a natural spectral sequence that we can construct. And, and so we're good, um, and yeah, and and, and so um, now I sort of want to tell you how we can sort of specialize um, what um, I just told you about to the case that um, we're working with the Steenar algebra or the dual of the Steenar algebra. So you know, um, right now you know our um, half algebra is just going to be um, the dual of the Steenar algebra, which is just um, a polynomial ring uh, in infinitely many generators, where um, uh, I'll denote. Each generator by um, psi to the k, where um, the degree of psi to the k is to the k minus one, and just for um, notational convenience, I'll use psi not to denote the um, element one um, of degree zero. Um, and you know, so our unit map is just is the map from F two into the Steiner, dual of the Steiner algebra, which just sends one to psi not. And similarly, um, our, our code product map um, from uh, the dual of the steam rod algebra into um, itself tensor twice is just going to be the map which sends um, psi i into um, this like sum from k is equal to zero to i of psi of the k tensored with psi to the i minus k uh, raised to the to the k times. Um, and you know it's 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 clear from how eta is constructed that um, the filtration um, that we, I mentioned on the previous page um, is just going to be um, F2 um, or for all U. And so as a result, we have that the associated graded is just going to be um, F2 in degree zero and uh, zero otherwise. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, but, you know, the it's, it's a theorem, you know, probably somewhat difficult theorem um, due to um, Peter May from his thesis, which says that um, the associated graded of the Steenrod algebra associated with this um, filtration is just going to be um, an exterior algebra over um, infinitely many generators, which I'll call, um, which I'm labeling by psi i um, j. And you know the way to sort of, um, you know, the, and so this um, I have to tell you what the the um, the co-product map is, and the co-product map is just going to be um, u sum from k is equal to zero 
um, to k is equal to i from psi k comma j tensored with um, psi of i minus k uh, comma uh, j plus k. Uh, and you know the I guess the, the other important things about this um, algebra are that psi of um, zero j is going to be equal to one um, for all j and um, psi i comma j is um, associated to the projection of psi i raised to the power to the j. Um, and yeah, and so um, so from this, like we have, you know, a, a, a decent description of what um, this associated graded is. Um, and now I want to, you know, consider the spectral sequence associated to this um, associated graded. Um, Can I say something real quick? Yeah, sure. So I don't think that these uh, CIJs are, are primitive uh, in general because of this, oh, really? this formula, but I, um, well, maybe, uh, unless you mean something different than I think you mean, uh, but usually when people talk about it, something in a co-algebra, something in a co-algebra being primitive, they mean that the co-product of X is X tensor one plus one tensor X. Um, oh, okay. But I think that what's true is that if you, if you dualize and go back to the associated graded of the actual Steenrod algebra, then, then that has primitive that's primitively generated or something. Um, anyway. Um, okay, yeah, I, I wasn't, I was kind of confused about that because like, I don't know, like at some point like Ravenel was talking about like some like Lie algebra thing and yes. he, was, he was claiming that these like CIJ were like primitive and I thought that was like. I think I was looking at this I exact could... sentence like the other day and I was like, I couldn't understand what, what he was, what he meant by it. Um, okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, indecomposable elements correspond to primitives undertaking the dual hop algebra, and these are all indecomposable generators. But shouldn't the dual of primitive generator be like indecomposable co-generator or something? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. Um, but I'm co-generator. Like I, I'm not, I'm not sure what that means, which is why I'm a little bit hesitant. The, about these it, are but. dual to the primitives, um, although there is like some discrepancy as to whether or not you want to take the hop algebra conjugates or not. But that won't change whether or not something is primitive. I don't believe. Right. So what I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is that if the dual of this object is primitively generated, then the dual statement to that should be that e zero a a lower star is is like indecomposably generated is not is not an interesting property. Um, that's a that's an excellent point. <laughs> but like, there there should be some dual statement which has something to do with the co-product as well as the product. Yeah, maybe we'll figure it out later. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, no, no, it's fine. I, I mean, like, I you, you understand this better than I do. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure if I should include it or not, but I I felt like concerned that I thought it was like, I thought it was important. So I, but you know, it's better to be right, I guess. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, we, we can talk about it more afterwards, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, yeah. So, so as I was saying, like, we want to calculate, you know, um, this like X um, over, you know, this associate graded. Um, and, you know, one thing that's, that's kind of nice is we have, um, you know, a statement about, um, how to take x over an exterior algebra, and this is sort of what this following lemma here says, and says that um, if we have, you know, if we're taking, if we're working over with a hop algebra over a field, um, and in particular, um, our hop algebra gamma is graded um, commutative um, in a finite type over k, and it's also an exterior algebra uh, on primitive generators uh, in infinitely variables, then you're going to have that x of gamma, um, x, x sub gamma of over k comma k is going to just be uh, a polynomial algebra on infinitely many generators and the, you know, where the yi is just going to be sort of represented by um, elements in your um, Cobar complex. Um, and so from, from this lemma, um, we have this spectral sequence to May, um, which uh, whose E1 page is going to be um, a uh, tri-graded thing over um, the associate graded of the dual of the Steenrod algebra. Um, and so it's just going 
going to be this polynomial algebra over um, h um, sub i comma j, where i is going to be positive and j is greater than or equal to zero. And it, this um, this uh, spectral sequence is going to converge to um, x to the dual C naught algebra. Um, and um, you know the, the D1 differential has a very um, explicit um, formula. It's just given by taking the sum from k is equal to one to uh, i plus one of uh, h k comma j times h sub i minus k comma uh, k plus j. Um, and um, these h i j here um, have, um, you know, so the way I've, I uh, labeled the notation basically is that um, the, the first index here is just s, the same s as before, and the um, t here is the same t as before, and u is going to be uh, correspond to the, the filtration degree. And so, um, and so the h sub i j just correspond exactly to um, psi of psi sub uh, i comma j. And in particular, we're going to have that um, these h i j's uh, have degree two to the j um, times two to the i minus one um, minus one. Um, and um, and yeah, so um, this I mean this is still like obviously like a big kind of gadget because now we have you know three gradings to like keep track of for example but you know um it, it'll make things like a little bit easier at least i hope it will um and yeah so now i want to like tell you a little so bit I, about i think oh, yeah. you're I, I think e0 a star has to have somehow a simpler co-product like you you've uh quotiented even you, you you've taken the Sorry, I'm I'm struggling for for how to word this, but um, so somehow you want the you want the coproduct in that that you just wrote down to show up as the D one differential, right? This um, rather than as something that you use to calculate the E one page. Does that make sense? Uh, um, I mean the way, or yeah, I know what you, I think I know what you mean. Um, maybe like what I should say is um, the re maybe or maybe I guess like. I don't know if this answers your question, but like maybe at first it looks kind of different from the co-product formula up here because you're here you're summing from k is equal to zero to k is equal to i, mm -hmm. whereas here you're you're starting from k is equal to one to i minus one. Is that maybe why you're is that maybe the issue? Well, it's it seems like to calculate this x over e zero a star, you're to calculate your e one page, you need the cijs to be primitive. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Right to to apply this lemma that you just said, and then yeah. so you're you're somehow picking out the primitive part in your coproduct formula, and then the rest of it is showing up as the D one differential. Um, oh, okay. okay. I don't entirely understand how that works, but but yeah, I, I don't either. To be okay. honest, I mean, like my intuition is that you're sort of doing a different. The, this formula is like a little bit different because we want to kill off like stuff like h zero j or and um you know and basically like that's why you want to get you want to ignore indices of like k is equal to zero and k is equal to i okay. um and that's sort of i mean that's where i think that's what makes it sort of compatible with um i where guess this, where oh, k is equal to zero or the last thing is equal to zero isn't that when one of the indexes is zero so you just end up getting one um yeah, but the thing is, is that you want to like, I guess like you want to get rid of those ideal. terms because you're taking the co-ideal. Yeah, you're taking the co-ideal. You're filtering. So over those are zero. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. I guess aren't th the point is that they should be primitive modulo the filtration in the associated graded, right? Like, so yeah. the induced co-algebra structure on the associated graded co-algebra has to preserve the filtration somehow like the natural thing if i have a filtered hop algebra and i take the associated graded then the co-algebra structure will take things in filtration one to things in filtration one but all of the symbols i think when you look at the the corresponding h's for the xe's all of the symbols that show up in the co-product formula are in higher filtration so you oh. like have to ignore them so it's primitive in that sense oh okay 
Does that make any sense, Paul or Zach? Does that? I think so, but well, like, so, so the formula that, that Zach wrote down for the co-product in the associated graded, this is not actually the co-product in the associated graded. This is like the, right. It's like what you get from the actual co product to... by replacing all of the, the powers of the CIs with mm -hmm. the corresponding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, great. so great. which that, form that actually the co product? Form? So I think the co product formula you wrote down is the right thing that you should write down, but you have to interpret it inside the associated graded algebra. And these classes, like, um, they don't live in the same filtration as the thing on the right. The way, at least when, uh, and this isn't like, I don't think, I'm not, I'm not saying you did something wrong. I'm saying like maybe it could have been written clear by people who write books. Um, okay. Yeah, so, I'm very confused by this. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't think you have anything to apologize yeah. for. <laughs> uh, but, but just like, um, right, you've written down this uh, filtration degree of certain classes. And I think if you look at what filtration the HIJs are supposed to live in, you'll notice that the co-product you wrote down like increases the filtration. And so whenever oh, I see. Yeah. it goes out of the filtration, you, you just have to force those things to be zero brutally because that's what ends up happening on the associated graded. Oh, okay. and, and this is why the differential, this is why the co-product ends up giving you the differential in the May spectral sequences because it's fucking with the filtration. Oh. It's relating different layers of the filtration and that's like, oh, like mystically by definition, what filtrations are supposed to do. Oh. It's relevant. The only reason I, I have any confidence in saying this is, is I ate lunch for like a year every day with, um, with Andrew Salk, who essentially like uh, has absorbed all of that green book. So <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't think there are great references for this in general, except like a living person. Okay. <laughs> um, Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. I mean, uh, that helps. <laughs> um, like, honestly, like, I wasn't even sure how, like, the grading was, like, originally, def like, was defined. Like, if you look in, like, the green book, he just gives you these, like, stars here, and he doesn't say, like, what like grading corresponds to what <laughs> and it's like tripped me up for a day at least but i mean it's like you know once you sort of like see a table it's easier but you know i don't know i shouldn't you know criticize too much <laughs> um but yeah um so yeah maybe i should continue so um so yeah so we have this like special sequence um and now like uh we can sort of try to do some some basic computations so, um, so here we have like a following like lemma, which just says that in the range that t minus s is less than or equal to um, 13, um, the E2 term of the May spectral sequence has um, the following generators, um, hj, which um, is just gonna be set to be h1 comma j, um, and it's gonna have degree um, to the j minus one. Uh, so j here can go from, I guess, like, zero to three. Um, and then we have B um, I comma J, which is just set to be equal to um, H um, I comma J squared. Um, and I guess I plus J have to be um, at most like four. Um, and then we have this other class uh, X seven, which is just um, H uh, two zero times H two one plus H one one H three zero. And this just has degree uh, seven. Um, and then, then we have like the following relations here um, that you can see right here. Um, and like maybe, uh, so maybe I should say like a little bit about, I, I, like this one was actually like fun to do. Um, I'm not gonna like, you know, go through every step, but I'm just sort of wrote everything down so you could like, you know, convince yourself that the algebra is like pretty straightforward. Like it, it felt like doing like a pseudo puzzle, like a kind of easy one, um, but, yeah, so like relation one, for example, just follows from um, the definition of, of the D1 differential um, because we're summing over, you know, K is equal to one to I minus one. So this is gonna be like an empty sum. Um, and then um, two just follows from um, the differential just being a derivation. 
and then um, like three just follows from like plugging in stuff and just seeing what happens. Um, and um, you know something that um, and yeah, like for the relations, you sort of um, you just sort of show that like various things are like co-boundaries, I guess, of like other elements um, from coming from the E1 page, um, and, and you can sort of see that calculation right here. Um, and like maybe something, so it's it's pretty like it's it's pretty like easy to calculate, I guess, is like the, the, the moral of this lemma, and it's like pretty like fun if you feel like doing it. Um, maybe like something that um, like at least when I saw this lemma, like in, in Ravenel's book, I was like kind of like annoyed because I didn't, it wasn't like obvious to me at first, like how, um, you know, for example, like that there aren't other generators, but like, I think that, you know, the key sort of like uh, insight, or I guess the, the key um, idea basically is that um, like, if you wanted, you could enumerate like all of the possible classes or all the possible like elements of degree, like at most 13. And there's only like, finally many of them like I, I mean I, I did a table and it's like I don't know like roughly like 20 and you could sort of just check my hand if they like you know mapped to zero under this d1 differential and so like you know you could check pretty easily that things don't like you don't have any other possible classes and it's only like a finite um check and like for the relations I, I haven't I didn't check like that these are the only relations but I assume you know you would have a similar sort of thing in that case as well. Um, but yeah, the point is that this is like a pretty like simple and fun thing that you can sort of do. Um, I was like reading like uh, an article by Tangora in the 70s where he was like introducing like the May spectral sequence. And he said that like, you know, like with two hours time, you could sort of do calculations like this and calculate up to like the range T minus S is less than like 40 in like under an hour and like less than two hours or something. So the point is that you can sort of play these like algebra tricks and go pretty far or kind of not that far, but you can go a little bit decently far just with simple algebra. Um, but yeah, so like from the slumma, we have this, like we have the following picture of um, what this is sort of like a rough sketch of what the E2 page looks like on the associate graded. Um, and, um, you know, basically the dots here just sort of correspond to like additive generator. So, you know, represents like the, the HJs and the, the B um, IJs, for example. And then um, arrows pointing up just mean that you can multiply by um, powers of H10 and you're still going to be like linearly independent. Um, and then similarly, you have a diagonal arrow, which just means that you can multiply by the class H11 and you're still going to have more stuff. Um, and then there's this like line of slope one third, and that just corresponds to um, multiplication by the class H12. Um, and then, yeah, and so, oh yeah, something else I should say is that um, two dots that are connected by a vertical line just means that the top um, element is just equal to H10 uh, of the bottom element. And so like, yeah, and um, you know, it's pretty like, it's pretty, it's relatively straightforward, I guess, but you still get some like, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, and then, yeah, and so, um, yeah, so that's that's roughly what um, the E2 page looks like. And then um, we have like one more lemma to sort of say what happens uh, for for calculating like the infinity page. Um, and basically what we have is like in the range T minus S is less than 13, we have like the addition, the following additional relations. Um, and that's, you know, um, given right here. And there's basically five of them. Um, and um, I didn't want to go through the proof just because like, I mean, basically the idea behind how you would prove this lemma is you want to sort of work, um, you, you, you um, like we don't know what, the, like May doesn't tell you what explicitly his, um, differential, like his higher differentials are for his spectral sequence, but because everything sort of corresponds to elements in the Cobar complex, we can sort of pass the Cobar complex and use the differentials associated to, to that um, coaching complex and, and work there. Um, and so, 
Um, and yeah, that's basically what I tried to write here. Um, uh, maybe something else I should, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I wasn't really, to be honest, I wasn't really sure how to like prove, I couldn't go through like the, I didn't know how to like go through the details to like check the, the details of how you'd show these generators because I wasn't really sure how like the, the D4 differential is on like B2 squared. Um, but I, I think it's like pretty straightforward if you, know how to work with the COBAR um, resolution. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah. you can, yeah. so you can like, write down um, COBAR representatives for these things, which is some gets, I think, more and more difficult as you go further, uh, further into the spectral sequence. Um, and there are some other tricks you can use, like this D4, I think you can get from an algebraic Steenrod operation. Um, and so somehow it follows from the D2 on B20 that you have this D4 on B20 squared. Um, and there's also oh. some like massy product descriptions for some of these things, which you can use to get differentials. But like, do you know how the D2 differential, like, so like how do you get like a representative for, yeah, for like so, the D2 differential? I mean, you, you, know, you know what it is in the associated graded. Um, so you, you take your thing in the associated graded, you lift it to, something that's actually in the COBAR complex. And then you calculate the differential on that. And that's gonna have, you need to add some correction terms to that, which live in sort of higher filtration to, to cancel out the, the other stuff that you get. I can uh, be more okay. specific than this if, if you want, but that's basically, uh, this is pretty hard to talk about. Um, yeah, maybe like at the end. Or... <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I wasn't, cause like Ravenel's proof like really confused me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just like, I don't know, like it didn't make, it was just like, here are these representatives and like in the Cobar complex. And I didn't understand how you would like connect the two, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, maybe we should talk about it afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's only like one page left, so it's not that. Sure. Yeah, um, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, so after this like lemma, you can like calculate stuff pretty easily. And, and this is just like a picture of what um, X of, you know, over the dual scenario algebra is in, in the same range as before. Um, and you have like these relations. Um, and, and yeah, so like, it's not, um, I mean, I labeled like some of the classes, but you know, it's not everything obviously. Um, but, um, you know, so we have, we have a concrete description of like X in this case. Um, and now we just sort of want to, you know, give a description of the, the two component here. And, and you just need the following lemma here, which just says that um, if we have like a, a permanent cycle um, in like in X um, and it's like represented by like some class alpha in, in like the um, stable homotopy groups, then um, H naught times X is just gonna be a permanent cycle represented by like, you know, two times alpha or whatever. And so, um, you know, I guess like what this saying is just that in this case, um, you know, H naught of X is just gonna to correspond to like, given like a class like H2 here, um, H2 times H naught is gonna be this class where my arrow is. Um, and so the point is that this corresponds to multiplication by two times alpha. And so um, because we have like three dots here, um, H2 is gonna have like torsion, or it's gonna have like, you know, when you raise it to like the two to the third power, you wind up with zero. And so from this, we can tell, for example, that the like two component um, in the third stable homotopy group of the series is just gonna be um, Z mod eight. And, and similarly, like we have a description for all the other homotopy groups. And this just corresponds to how many times you can go vertically up um, along like this chart for, for each degree. So you have um, in, in degree zero, you can keep going infinitely many times because you have, um, I mean, H, zero to the K just, you know, doesn't have any, it's always known in independent stuff. And so um, you, you get um, like Z2 here, um, not Z mod two. Um, and then, but for the rest, you just have like, you know, two tors, you, you have finite torsion basically, um, or zero. Um, and yeah, that's basically like all I wanted to talk about. Um, sorry, that took less time than I thought it would. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, Paul, did you want to like say? Sure. Well, first of all, does um, does anyone have any questions about this, or, or other comments for Zach? 
There was a question I had a while back and uh, it was this like lemma about calculating uh, X of K with itself over the, the Hopf algebra and that being okay. polynomial. Uh, I, this is like, I can't remember if this is in that catalog of like basic Tor and X calculations that I like can never remember how to do without sitting down and just like working them out again, or if there's like sort of something different here that is maybe not uh, something you, that like is standard in a homological algebra, um, in homological algebra, so. I think it's a standard thing, because I remember like sitting in on like, some like talk by homotopy theorists and he just like mentioned it as like you know a thing that i don't know i don't remember like why i mean i think i don't know i mean it's like i think it's like a one or two line proof that uses basically combinatorial algebra but maybe like the the question is yeah um yeah i think it's pretty simple so, so I, I think i know how to prove this um do so you see like an injective like standard injective resolution or something and then that that might do it. What, what I was, th I mean, so if, if you think about, th this is like X of co-modules, but if you think about X of modules over, of the base field to itself over an exterior algebra, then, um, then that also uh, is, is a polynomial algebra. Um, and it's basically, you can break the exterior algebra up into like a tensor product of a bunch of singly generated exterior algebras. And then for each of those, you can write down a, a very simple resolution of the of the field. Um, and then if, if you're working with a Hopf algebra, which looks like this, then this X of co-modules is dual to an X of modules. And the, the dual Hopf algebra has, has the same property. It's also exterior on primitive generators. Oh, OK. So you can just dualize. You, OK, yeah. right. Yeah, Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, always the casual resolution. So they may also proved. Well, sorry, I'm I'm getting us off topic. Does it, does anyone have have uh, have other questions? Oh, I didn't see the chat. Um, Near the end, you had like a Z mod eight in one of the stems. Oh yeah, so that's just this there, thing here. H2. Is there is and maybe we've actually and maybe we've said something about this before, but how do you sing, distinguish that from a like a Z mod two cubed? Um, I think it's just because of this lemma. Like you can multiply by two. Like your your initial class is like H two. It's generated by like H two. I think. And then you multiply by two. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, oh, is this actually saying it's it's cyclic? If you have a tower going up like that? Yeah, that's yes. what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. And then if the if the vertical tower kind of like broke up into pieces, those would be different different summands. Yeah, this is just like additively. Like this is a vector space. Like describing what's going on. So it's not like, I mean, maybe this isn't like, like, I guess like what I'm saying is, is like, I've given you like an additive description of the stable homotopy group. So I haven't told you, I mean, I guess like, you know, the relations here give you like what the ring structure is like, but I'm not saying that like, I'm just saying like when you add stuff, like the vertical line tells you like what the, the two torsion is, if that makes sense. Like, so you can add, each time you go up like by one, you're multiplying by two. Um, if there's a line there. Yeah, if there's a vertical line, sorry, yeah. Do you know why this lemma is true? Uh, not off the top of my head. Does anyone else, I, I don't, I don't know. Sorry, what exactly is the lemma again? So the, the lemma is that H0 detects multiplication by two. Um, oh, it's, I mean, it's dual to square one and square one is the box team. Okay. Oh. And square, square one, you can just, I mean, so if you trace everything back through the definition, C1 is, um, 
is the H naught class. It's the thing that converges. It's the dual of H naught or whatever. And C1 is um, sort of the homology box team. And if you unwind what the box scene is doing, it is exactly um, detecting multiplication by two. There's like a, just a completely algebraic construction of the first box theme that Mosher and Tengora give. Does that help, gotcha. Paul? Yeah, yeah. Maybe another comment that we could make is that so last week, Jacob showed us a spectral sequence that computes the homotopy groups of KO. And some of the stuff here also appears in KO. So the, the map from the, the sphere to, the, to KO is an injection on the 0, 1, and, and 2 stems, which is kind of interesting. So, um, okay, so if there are no further questions, we should, uh, we should thank Zach. So thanks a lot. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.